Why don't we start with the, uh, the numbers? Um, you beat estimates on uh, sales and operating profit, um, but you still face supply chain, uh, a supply chain crisis here. How are you dealing with that? Uh, yeah, this is absolutely true. Uh, quarter three really was difficult for us. Uh, it uh, drove our volume brands into the red numbers. Uh, premium remained quite resilient. No Porsche, Audi doing quite well, but the volume brands really suffered a lot. We're also prioritizing semiconductors towards higher margins. So um, all in all, I think uh, we are happy with the results. And uh, I'm sure that we have seen the worst. So uh, Q4 should be much better now. We should be through the worst, and then we should see an increase uh, of semiconductor supply uh, basically quarter after quarter. This is how we see the supply chain recovery. Uh, there will be remaining constraints for uh, even for next year, but uh, I hope that uh, months over months we will show a better resilience of the supply chain. So we're working hard for that. Uh, we have uh, big teams, uh, direct supply, direct contact with the semiconductor manufacturers, uh, with the foundries. Uh, and uh, so our teams are working really hard to get more. And you, we should see some innovation. About... But there are also also some positives. Now we had, uh, we had very good, very strong EV sales. We could double EV sales over last year. So also some positive signs from uh, out of uh, quarter three. Sure. You had talked about the possibility of making your own semiconductors. Is that still a topic of discussion at Volkswagen? Is that for sure, for sure. But that takes time. Now we have to build up the resources as the semiconductor landscape in the car really is consolidating. Now we're coming to uh, higher, uh, more performance compute uh, units in the car. Uh, it makes sense, it could make sense uh, in one or the other area to do your own semiconductor design. We are working on that. Uh, this is our way forward, not for all the semiconductor. Semiconductor content in the cars is growing significantly, about 7 to 8% year after year. Uh, so there's a lot of um, uh, silicon going into the car in the future. Some of it will be, will be made by our own entities. Are, are you seeing other supply chain system. issues? You know, beyond semiconductors, are you are you are you having trouble getting hold of any other components for cars, or are you seeing substantial price increases? Uh, we see we see uh, price increases in commodities, uh, in precious metals, uh, and uh, steel. Uh, we even see some constraints in some of the areas, but so far this is manageable. Uh, determining really or, or crucial is uh, semiconductor supply and will remain semiconductor supply. Are, are you able to pass on those price increases? I know, you know, dealers certainly in the U.S. are charging uh, far above MSRP when they can. Are, are you able as a manufacturer to start raising prices? Uh, we see some uh, movement in our uh, used car business. Now, used car prices are quite stable, even coming up uh, as, the, as the demand is stronger than the supply. Uh, we also see some possibility to reduce our sales incentives, uh, though this is a worldwide trend. And this also is, uh, you can see in our numbers now, uh, as we see uh, sales numbers basically on the level of last year, we still will we have uh, a much higher a revenue, so uh, the we we could we can improve the quality of our sales. Yes, we we do see um, demand stronger than supply. Certainly for the Golf, or at least we've 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 seen reports that you've got a backlog of one hundred thirty thousand for the Tiguan, uh, more than a hundred thousand. What kind of backlog are you looking at right now? Yeah, this is, uh, you mentioned it now, even more on the EV sales, we are, have delivery times for up to six months, seven months now, which is already quite critical, you know, because customers are not prepared to wait for so long, uh, but it's through the whole range. I think we have a good product portfolio, uh, longest lead times for the top premium brands, uh, then uh, EVs, and even in the, on the volume side, we have several months waiting times for the delivery of the cars, which is, uh, which we're sorry about. No, we're doing our best, and hopefully next year we should be we should be the, once again get closer to the customer orders. 
well, I, I suppose it's better than other problems you could have. When we get to the end of the year, are you going to have a backlog of half a million cars? What, what kind of numbers are we talking about? Yeah, that might be the, the number we, which we should consider. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's let's talk about the uh, EV battery ventures that you've got. Um, you mentioned sales are going incredibly well. Demand is stronger than supply, and the market loves the businesses right now. Are you are you thinking about listing some of these businesses? Are you moving forward with those those plans? Uh, on the battery side, we are considering, let's say, because uh, there's a huge investment going in, which we can't do from our own balance sheets. So there might be opportunities for investors, but it's still uh, in the process of uh, uh, working out, considering we are in the process of building up our investment roadmap. We have to build six plants only in Europe. Uh, we made some investments already in China. Uh, in America, we are uh, already uh, also considering uh, some uh, additional plans for our growing EV sales. So um, I would say within a year or so, we should have a clearer picture of uh, how we're going to finance that and uh, which are the possibilities for investors to come in. Isn't it a great time right now to go to market with some of these assets, Herbert? I think it's it's good times. Uh, we are not yet ready in in those areas, so uh, I hope that uh, the conditions remain uh, positive in the capital markets. Manager Magazine says you've hired Goldman Sachs and Freshfields for the possible IPO of Porsche. Can you tell us any more about that? No, I can't. <laughs> All right, I didn't really expect that. Let's talk about the electrification. Uh, for, for me, the exciting news is that Claudia Domenicali and Ducati have signed up to make electric bikes for MotoGP for the Moto E series. Um, does this mean you're, you're going to be able to electrify your entire range? Uh, that's probably a long way to go. No, as you are a motorcycle rider, you know that electrification on the motorbike side goes much slower than on the car side. I think it's also not so necessary because it's only a small proportion of, of CO2 emissions, very small, very tiny. Uh, and uh, on the EV side, uh, we see electrification coming. I think the approach, MotoGP having a special series with electric bikes makes a lot of sense. And Claudio is really excited because uh, the, the I think the racing, the electric racing, will improve a lot using uh, Ducati uh, EV bikes. So you're going to see some change and we're all excited about it. It will be very sporty bikes, relatively lightweight for, for being electric. This is the biggest challenge. Uh, and it will be a race where, where the riders don't have to swap uh, bikes anymore. So I think it's a good first step for the motorcycle side. I'm looking forward to it. Herbert, thanks so much for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Matt.